Dear friends and colleagues, this is Dr. Anand Krishnamurthy, a practicing dentist from Mumbai. I've been in private practice for 20 years. My area of expertise is basically related to implantology and CAT CAM dentistry. I've been a course provider in the field of implantology for the last 10 years, having trained more than 1000 dentists across the country through the prestigious implant competence programs. I am also the key opinion leader for companies like Equinox Medical Holland, Stroman, GSK India and Bisco International USA. I am also a fellow and diplomat of the International Congress of Oral Implantology. The video which has been compiled for this presentation is about oral implantology which is a much sought after science and branch of dentistry nowadays. The video which has been demonstrated and brought to you is basically of a patient who is edentulous, a 64 year old male patient who reported to our clinic with no teeth in the lower jaw. The idea which was proposed to the patient and agreed by the patient was to place a few implants and basically make him more supported on the denture so that he can have all forms of mastication and chewing efficiency restored back in his lifestyle. But the idea which was proposed to the patient was basically correlated with a series of uh, pre-clinical and preliminary uh, evaluations in the form of a CT scan, a CBCD scan which also evaluated the conditions of the bone in terms of density, topography and available volume. Cross sections of the CT scan were taken into consideration to make sure that the implant positions are in well defined bone away from any important landmarks. The idea of having a three dimensional planning was proposed and agreed by the entire staff which included the surgeon, the prosthetic dentist and the final restorative dentist. The considerations were taken so that we have sufficient amount of bone width and bone height for placing the implants. The number of minimum implants in this situation would have been to place four implants in the anterior symphysis, the interforamina region. So let us now go through this journey of the surgery where we placed four implants using the Myriad Connect system for this patient. The actual video was taken for about one and a half hours of footage which the surgery lasted for. But to make this DVD more interesting and interactive for the audience, we have edited it and brought it into a 17 to 20 minute time frame. The implants which have been used in this case is Myriad Connect and the final prosthetic outcome for this patient is going to be a bar and clip supported over denture. As you can see, we have done the complete evaluation in terms of preclinical, CBCT, medical history and the patient is good to go for the surgery now. So now let's begin with the surgery now. You can see that we have a good clinical view of the area to be operated and now we can start with the incision. The patient has been prepared, local anesthetic has been given, the patient is comfortable and now we start with the 15 number Barker blade. This is a very classical incision, a U-shaped paracrestal incision which starts with a midline release. The midline release is basically given so that we have good sufficient release of the periosteum and it prevents and gives us a good visibility of the alveolar ridge in terms if we need to do any kind of crest augmentation or crestotomy or flattening of the crestal ridge. So now you can see the incision which is being given. The idea is to stay as paracrestal as possible so that we have complete submersion of the implants in terms of using a one stage or a one piece implant and at the same time follow a good protocol for good primary closure in, te in terms of it's a two piece implant. You can see the incision has to be always drawn in a single linear fashion without basically disrupting the contact point between the blade bevel and the crest of the ridge. Once the incision is completed, then you start with the periosteal release. The mucoperiosteal flap has to be reflected in one go. This is going to be a full thickness mucoperiosteal flap and not a partial thickness. The instrument which you can see here is a simple periosteal elevator. Always use it with the bevel facing down towards the crest of the ridge. Start from the midline and work your way all the way to the back. Care should be taken so that no periosteum gets torn during this procedure. This will help us in having a complete achievement of good post-operative healing. Now you can see in this video that we have reflected the flap completely and my periosteal elevator, now you can see I'm pointing it towards the blunt dissection of the mental nerve as it is originating from the mental foramen. The other thing which we also do for most of our cases is flattening of the ridge. Now, uh, if you guys would be thinking 
that this will help us in achieving a good platform for placing the implants, that's right. But in a situation where there is a residual bone height which is already less in terms of vertical height, it is better not to do it because you will end up losing more bone. Once the crestotomy is completed, you will see that we have good platform to place the implants, good diameter of implants to be placed with a good width of the bone as you can see in this image right now. The system which is going to be used in this case is Myriad Connect. As you can see, the Myriad system is basically an implant system which comprises of seven application specific designs which can be done with one surgical kit. The surgical protocol is very simple. As you can see in the animated video, we have a pilot drill, which is basically the initial drill which is used for the osteotomy. Copious amount of irrigation is a must for all the implant procedures we do using a physio dispenser. The idea of having good coolant for the drilling is basically so that you don't have any kind of overheating of the bone. The second drill which is used is a 3.3 drill. It's a step drill, it's a twisted drill, which is used in the same linear fashion as the pilot drill was engaged. Now this is basically to widen the osteotomy. Once the gradual progressive widening of the osteotomy happens, the third drill to be used is a 3.8. The 3.8 drill is also used to the same depth as the earlier drills with the 2.0 and the 3.3. And now we have a gradual widening of the osteotomy so that the implant placement can be done. It is optional in, in, a, in a soft bone situation where you can actually use the 4.5 drill to place the implant or you can in a dense bone protocol. But otherwise, I would rather recommend doing a 3.8 drill to place an implant which is of a slightly wider diameter so that you can have a good primary stability and insertion torque for the implant. The instrument adapter which has been connected to the handpiece is basically the implant driver for the Myriad Connect. The implant is picked up from the canister, carried straight to the osteotomy and you can see that the handpiece can be used as a mount to directly carry the implant into the osteotomy to engage into bone. The optional thing which we can do is use a torque ratchet which is a handheld torque ratchet to achieve a good primary torque of 50 to 70 newtons as per desired in this case. Once it is done, now we'll come back to the patient. In the patient, we have marked the areas for the osteotomy based on the mental foramen, the location and the anterior loop and we start with the pilot drill as exactly the animation sequence which is shown on the video. Once the pilot drilling for both the distal implants is completed. We can gradually move our implant positions to the anterior areas where we would be using the same pilot drill to mark the two osteotomy holes. Total marking of four implant positions as you can see here. But before we do with the anterior ones, we make sure that we put in the paralleling pins. The paralleling pins basically is used so that we have good prosthetic parallelism of the implants distally versus the implants anteriorly. Make sure that you use the paralleling pins which is given along with the implant system kit in these kind of cases where you have multiple implants so that you have good parallelism between the implants. As you can see in the image here, we have verified the parallelism of the two distal implants placed anterior to the mental foramen and now we can start considering the position of the anterior implants, the two anterior implants in the parasymphysis area. Now you can see we have started drilling with the pilot drill in the marked position for the anterior implant to the right side. We go our, we are going basically up to a depth mark of 13 millimeters all the way down in a push and pull pumping action. Care should be taken that there is good amount of copious irrigation during the surgery so that there is no overheating of bone. Another paralleling pin which is placed here to verify the position of this implant with the implant distal to it. Once this is done, we can then start with the anterior implant on the left quadrant. Again, the pilot drill which is being used, copious irrigation and going all the way up to a depth of 13 millimeters, maintaining parallelism with the implant anteriorly and distal to it. Please note that once because of the crestotomy procedure, now it is much easier with a good bevel and a good platform to place these implants using the pilot drill so that there is no slippage of the drill either buccally or lingually as it happens usually during the edentulous cases where the ridge is knife edged. Once all the pilot drills are completed, we put in all the paralleling pins 
and we always observe the case from a 12 o'clock position like you can see here a top a eagle's view to make sure that all the implants are parallel the parallelism between the implants is maintained because this is a cardinal thing to be observed before we start with the wider diameter drill now you can see here this is the second drill from the sequence of the myriad system which is the 3.3 twist drill we are going up to a depth mark of 13 millimeters anteriorly the first implant drill the second one now you can see this is the third implant we're going up to a mark of 13 going now all the way to 13 and then coming back to the fourth implant and going all the way up to a 13 millimeter mark with the 3.3 drill now the same thing is done with a 3.8 drill which is the third drill from the myriad system going up to a mark of 13 millimeters doing it all the way to the implants anterior to it care should be taken that we reduce the rpm in this kind of situation because as we drill and widen the osteotomy there is a chance that the osteotomy may become inaccurate as far as the implant placement is concerned so we always ensure that we reduce the rpm but at the same time maintain the same torque so that we have less wastage of bone so that we can get good primary stability of the implants once the complete 3.8 drilling is done, now this is going to be the final drill for our implant placements, which is going to be the 4.3. We again reduce the RPM, bring it to around 600 or 700, go once in and once out. As you can see, I always do the distal implants first and then come to the anterior ones. But the idea is that the last drill can always be used only once. Because if you try to use the same drill twice, you will end up over widening the osteotomy. Now you can see here all the four osteotomies are ready and now they are good to go for the placement of the implants. The Myriad Connect is basically a one stage but a two piece implant which comes in a packaging which is sterile from the inside. It is a double blister pack so the operatory assistant can handle the outer packaging as you can see here this is my operatory assistant who is handling the box. The outer box is non-sterile but as he opens the box as you can see here the blister is opened. The packaging is open. The red dot, as you can see in the video, is basically the sterile sticker for the gamma radiation. It's a dual stage packaging which contains the prosthetic components on one side and the implants on the other side. Care should be taken that you open it in such a way that you can use the prosthetic components in a sterile manner. As you can see, the prosthetic components which are contained in the packaging includes the lab analog, the castable sleeve, the abutment screw and the transfer cap. The clinician opens the sterile packaging which contains the implant. The implant is contained in the center in a titanium housing. You use the abutment driver which is the Myriad Connect abutment driver. Pick up the implant and bring it to the osteotomy site straight in a no hands, no instrumentation protocol. We don't use any mounts in this system. It's a direct to site delivery. The implant is pressed into the osteotomy. It's a one stage implant so you will always make sure that the polished collar of the implant stays out outside the bone in a supracrystal position. The RPM which is used in this handpiece right now is in the range of 25 to 35 which is the recommended norm. As you can see blood oozing out from the osteotomy coming in direct contact with the nanopore surface of the implant so that you have good engorgement of the angiogenesis factors which is supposed to bring in the osseo integration in a three month period. So one by one each of the implant is picked up from the sterile canister, connected to the implant driver and brought to the osteotomy and used at an RPM of 25 to bring it to the complete submersion. Please make sure that you will be using the insertion torque or the torque ratchet which is provided with the system for the final torquing of the implants to a torque of at least 50 to 60 newtons. The system is basically a two-stage implant. So in a two-stage implant, the polished core always stays outside. As you can see in the video, even with the handpiece, we are taking it so that the nanopore surface gets completely submerged to the bone and the polished collar of the titanium stays outside. Even with the handpiece, you can get an initial insertion torque of around 50 to 60 newtons depending on the physio dispenser. But it is imperative that you use the handpiece and then the torque ratchet to make sure that you have complete torquing of the implants into the osteotomy to get a good primary stability. You can see a small switch as you can see the implant going inside there is a small switch area which is supposed to provide a bone lock 
so make sure that the switch area the undercut below the polished collar is completely submerged in the bone after the final placement position is well established so once the handpiece carries all the four implants into the osteotomy now it is time to connect the same implant driver to the torque ratchet the handle torque ratchet which has a torque calibration connected to the implant the top part make sure that the engagement area does not slip and you try to torque the implants to a minimum torque of 50 to 70 newtons as done during the early loading protocol for implants so you can see here a few more turns make sure that you are going in the right direction in the clockwise direction and well established position for all the four implants as you can see from the 12 o'clock position here so once the implant positions are done well established torquing completed it's time to establish the one stage healing protocol by connecting the packaging given gingiva former or the healing abutment now in a one stage implant normally the healing abutment would be almost supra gingival by 2 to 3 mm care should be taken so that in case if there is any denture which is supposed to be lying on these implants need to be soft relined so once we are done with the procedure of placement of the implants now it's time to suture it back back to the biology of nature's own way of healing for the epithelium the suture material which has been used in this case is a ptfe polytetrafluoroethylene suture which is basically the common man's word is teflon so we call it ptfe or the teflon suture we always start with the midline like you can see here never start with the distal end and try to work your way towards the center because anatomically the suture margins will get juxtaposed always suture from the front to the back in this case we sutured all the way from the front to the back using the midline release as a starting point and we used single interrupted sutures to make sure that we have complete closure of the entire flap as you can see here so once the complete suturing is done using the single stage healing protocol we make sure that the healing caps remain above the gingival levels for the period of 3 months and then the patient wears a soft relined denture during that period so that there is no transmucosal loading on the implants the post operative image as you can see is basically a post cbct scan which we normally do for all our cases it shows the three dimensional orientation of the implant position so that you can verify it with the actual position of the implants as it was done during the planning software so you can actually match the pre operative data with the post operative data to make sure that you have accurately positioned the implants so after a healing period of 3 months as you can see in this picture here the implants are healed the soft tissue collars are formed and we have good impression technique to follow which is the open tray impression technique for fabrication of a master model or a working model on which lab analogs will be used to prepare a die on which we are going to be casting a metal framework in the form of a bar once the bar is fabricated we are going to be incorporating the elitor clips which is going to be acting as an engagement device onto the denture the denture is basically a, a simple ordinary complete denture with the exception that the elitor clip is going to have a retentive mechanism which is going to act as a female component to engage the bar which is going to be the male component the engagement of the male and the female elitor clip versus the bar provides a great stability and support for the implant supported over denture once the bar is fabricated polished on the model it is transferred to the patient on top of the implants the unique advantage with myriad connect is that there is no extra abutment which is required and the bar directly gets fitted on to the fixture level so now we have the patient who is going to be on an implant supported over denture for the lower jaw the patient also had an existing complete denture which is retained and made it in centric relationship with the new over denture which we prepared for the lower jaw The patient is going to be a happy patient who is going to be able to eat all kinds of foods. Mastication restored, form and function restored, and he's going to be happy with his lifestyle change. So that's Dr. Anand Krishnamurthy signing off with this beautifully compiled video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and you can always get in touch with me at anandkrishnamurthy at me dot com for any further queries or details. Hope you had a great time. Bye bye.